Hello, everyone, and welcome to the video. Thank you so much for joining me. And Kale, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Glad to be back. Now, if you guys don't know, Kale has his own uh, channel on YouTube. It's called Vesper Hockey, and he's he's talking he's talking hockey, but specifically he's talking a lot about jerseys. So if you guys are jersey heads like uh, Kale and I, uh, Vesper Hockey is a really good place to find uh, lots of unboxings and lots of jersey knowledge. Now, something you might not know about Kale is that he's actually a Rangers fan. Yes, yes, I not am. A lot of people know that about you. No, uh, I'm a pretty big bandwagon person, but uh, <laughs> Rangers are are my main team, so. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, you have to be happy with their performance this year and that little rebuild that they did, and uh, they're on yeah. a pretty good trajectory. So I didn't see that quick uh, turnaround coming that, that fast. Heck no. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, about the upcoming series between the Rangers and the Hurricanes. Now, I've, I've already done uh, a couple of these videos before with the Pittsburgh-Montreal series, oh. the Toronto-Columbus series, and uh, a couple of the others as well. So Kale hasn't watched those, so I'm going to walk through the process of how I did this and... Uh, and for anyone who's new, then you guys can can listen as well. So the way I broke this down, and it's really kind of silly because I don't think really any of this matters because this is a weird time right now, but it's I think there's a little bit of value going through it. So I came up with 15 different topics, and then I scored every team in the in the in every topic and then picked a winner for every topic, and then I added it up at the end. Kind of a cool. silly little formula. So here's the topics. Season, power play, penalty kill, offense, defense. Up the middle, wingers, defensemen, goaltending, pressure, experience, leadership, coaching, chemistry, and history between the two teams. So there's lots to to dive into here, but uh, let's run through it pretty quickly. And uh, I'll tell you who I picked as the winner in every category. And then we can have a little discussion about each one individually. Speak up if you want, or we can save it to the end, uh, whatever you want. So So, season, the, uh, the Hurricanes had the better record this year, so... Hurricanes get the nod there. That's not uh, that's not an opinion. That is fact. Uh, power play, another fact. It goes to the Rangers. They have the better power play this year. Penalty kill, that goes to the Hurricanes. Uh, offense, so this is the subjective part. It, this was difficult because the Rangers clearly have a lot of offensive threat, but I think the Carolina Hurricanes have a lot of underrated offensive th- uh, threat. So oh, yeah. I actually didn't pick a winner here. I, I picked a split. So you'll really? notice coming down through here, you'll see some splits. But uh, yeah, what's your thoughts on on that? Who would you pick as as the better offensive team? I think team? honestly, I'd take Carolina any time over New York as far as offense and goal scoring goes. The thing you about know, Sebastian uh, Aho and Sveshnikov, they're just really, really talented players. Heck yeah! The thing about Carolina, they have so much, uh, or not so much, but they have a lot more depth scoring than the Rangers yes. do. So uh, yeah, I, I just felt like those two. Or those couple of guys up front in, in the Rangers really maybe are more of a threat than the offensive, the major offensive threats on Carolina, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. where the Rangers have a lot of skill, like really up high and kind of the depth, they fall down. But Carolina is kind of maybe a little bit more in between. So I kind of thought that maybe they, I give them a little bit of a split. So uh, moving on to defense, I gave this to the Hurricanes. I think they're the more res- yeah. defensive responsible team. Um, so we're, you know, we're coming back and forth here on these, on these scores. And again, they don't really mean anything, but, uh, up the middle, this one was difficult because the Rangers do have some talented centermen, but I did give this to the Carolina Hurricanes. Who would you say has a better centerman? I am, I'm man crushing on Sebastian Aho. I think, (laughs) I think the Carolina Hurricanes defense is, or sorry, uh, depth at center is really, really good. It is good. All through the four lines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wingers, I gave this to the Hurricanes as well. I think they have a better supporting cast along both sides. Uh, all the Rangers do I'm, have some. Go ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, Chris Kreider is a winger, right? Yes. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Carolina might have trouble matching up on the wing uh, as opposed to the Rangers. Um, just personal opinion, but I, I really like some of the wingers in, in New York. Oh heck yeah! I think he plays the yeah. left wing, possibly. Yeah, uh, I don't know, what, with Panarin and everything, like he's a winger as well. So, yeah, when you when you have a heart person nominee on the wing, I think you have to give it to them in that category. Well said. I accept. Uh, so, defenseman, I gave this to the Hurricanes. Yes, I agree. They just have a better better depth on the back end. Yeah. Um, goaltending. This one was extremely difficult for me because you've got two talented guys in Carolina, but then you've got three really talented guys in the Rangers as well. 
and you don't really know who's going to take the reins on both on, on either team. I think there's a lot of potential mm-hmm. there for any one of those five goalies just to take it and, and run with it. So uh, I gave it a split. I couldn't really pick. I would say New York uh, has got uh, the edge there as well. They've got three options. All three, I trust. Yeah. All three of them really well. Which is amazing. I don't. I can't remember the last time I said that about a team. Yeah, with with three people, you normally have two that you can trust, but to have three. Yeah. I mean, I know Lundqvist did struggle at, at points this year, obviously, and he's kind of on the way out. But I, I still think he can get hot, and his record over his career against Carolina is phenomenal. So it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, pressure. So which team has the most pressure? Uh, to succeed and I gave this to the Rangers which means I think Carolina has more pressure on their shoulders okay. to succeed yeah uh, I thought you were Rangers, talking the other way around there yeah no <laughs> no I, I, I agree think then. I think the Rangers fans realize that the team is kind of going through a rebuild obviously with all the new players coming in um, yeah. they are accepting to some growth whereas Carolina have already set some expectations in the previous year and uh, oh yeah before absolutely. that so there's I would say there's actually a lot of pressure on the Carolina Hurricane shoulders to yep. succeed and not really that much in the Rangers. So no, that's for sure. The I Rangers agree with that. get that point. Uh, experience. This is tough because the Rangers do have a lot of experience in the past decade. Yeah. The team has changed so much in the past two and a half years that I actually gave the experience to the hurricanes here. If that makes sense. I would agree. I mean, Lundquist is still there. Panera and he was part of the team that helped beat Tampa last year. So they, they do have some experience, but, I think Carolina coming off the conference final from last season, I think they have a little bit more experience recently. Yeah, totally. And uh, Justin Williams. And Justin Williams, he says like 55 or something like that. So he's yeah. got experience from uh, World War II. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so pressure, experience, uh, leadership. I gave this to the Hurricanes as well. I think they have more veteran guys, maybe a little bit more experienced to have been at the dance a little bit longer so i did give this to yeah. uh, carolina but i mean that's no not that's not to take away from the rangers they definitely have some uh some great leaders well i mean the rangers have pretty much traded out all their leadership i mean zuccarello has gone i mean mcdonough's gone brady shea has gone yeah. to carolina i mean there's just so many players that were in that role that are no longer with the team so it, you're definitely remarkable. right to give it to carolina all right uh next up is coaching this one was tough for me as well, but I, I gave it to uh, Carolina. I really like Rod Brindamore. I think yeah. he did a fantastic job last year in the playoffs. Just the, not only the way that he coached, but how he specifically talked to his players on the bench uh, and how he spoke to the media afterwards. So I, I'm a big fan of Rod Brindamore as a coach. I was never really liked him as a player, but he's definitely one of my favorite coaches. So I had to give this to her to the Hurricanes. I I would agree. Uh, coach Quinn is is a little new and still unexperienced kind of like his team. So it, it could kind of work out interestingly, but uh, yeah, I would have to say Brenda Moore should probably get the nod there as well. He prepares his team so well. He that does. It's unreal. He plays or he coaches like he played, like he was always prepared to play. He's a hard player. And that's what kind of what Carolina's like. Absolutely. He's really like a student of the game. He's kind of obsessed with it. Yeah. Uh, chemistry. This is tough because I would say generally Carolina's team hasn't really changed, so they do have a lot of chemistry, but the new chemistry in the Rangers is pretty phenomenal. So yes, I had definitely. a really hard time picking a win here, so I gave it a split. Yeah, that's not, not unfair at all. I think that's pretty reasonable. I mean, Carolina did bring in some new players at the, the deadline. I mean, Dougie Hamilton, he might not even play for the first little bit. He might miss yeah. the series completely. So, I mean, there is chemistry. I mean, Sammy Votnin, who they brought in at the deadline, he hasn't even played yet. Yeah. Uh, Vinny Trochak, I mean, how he interacts with his new team. And considering how long it's been since we've actually played hockey, it will be very interesting to see how the chemistry kind of comes together. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you mentioned Trochak because he's kind of a wild card. He he had a, has, He's had a lot of success elsewhere not really in depth playoff runs but as far as having chemistry with a lot of other players in the league depending on who he's playing with and yeah. the team or whatever but trocek i think is a guy that could probably fit in on any team so it's it's going to be really interesting to watch him specifically and to see how he does i'm really i'm really excited for it to be honest me too actually uh, uh the last one on here is history so if i stack if i go back between uh, the Carolina Hurricanes versus the New York Rangers in the last 10, 15 years. 
it goes to the Rangers. The Rangers have have uh, definitely had the upper hand on uh, on Carolina. Well, especially this season, they played yeah. four games and New York won all four of them. Yeah, exactly. So you're talking about Carolina having the better overall record against each other. Rangers definitely won that one. And sometimes that matters big. Yeah. So if I add all those up, at least on my list, I've got the Hurricanes with nine, the Rangers with three, and a split of three. So statistically, I look at that and say, okay, well, the Hurricanes are going to win this series. Yeah. Do I actually think that? That's I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, honestly, I don't. I don't think that the formula really works here. I think the Rangers, although are very a, a very stacked team, I consider them the underdog in this situation, and uh, they're probably the the biggest threat of an underdog in these playoffs. I really think that yeah. they can beat Carolina. I like both teams, so yeah, I'm so really not going to be disappointed. Teams. Yeah, I'm not going to be disappointed. Uh, whoever loses, but. I think the Rangers have a lot of potential. I think they could definitely pull off an upset here over Carolina. Yeah. And uh, that's actually my official prediction is uh, the Rangers upsetting Carolina in five games. Ooh, going the distance in five. I hope it goes to five. Um, this is honestly, I think, the hardest series for me to predict. Uh, out of all the series, this is the one that gave me the most trouble trying to figure out which one I thought. I feel yeah. like maybe it's because I'm kind of emotionally involved. I'm not sure who I want to win. I love the Rangers, but I've also really liked Carolina all the way back to about 2006 when they beat Edmonton. Like I've just always had a soft spot for Carolina, and this one is just really, really interesting for me. Uh, I could see either team winning, and whoever does end up winning this one, I think could do some damage in later rounds, whether it's New York or Carolina. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. Carolina has a history of when they make the playoffs, they go far. Um in New York, they're just kind of finding their groove, and that could be scary. So I, I really, really don't know. It's... I think I have to take Carolina in in five. Oh, really? I think I'm taking Carolina. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, I I mean that doesn't really surprise me. I, I was shocked because I I figured you'd pick the Rangers, um, but it's not going to be surprised if the Rangers win, and it's not going to be surprised no. if the Hurricanes win. It's That's the biggest those... takeaway from this. Yeah. Whoever wins, it should not be a surprise. I don't think. Totally. And I mean, Hurricanes fans, you sh don't be upset if you beat by the Rangers, a uh, lesser team in the standings this year. Yeah. And uh, Rangers fans, you can't be upset by being being defeated by a Carolina because it's such a strong mm -hmm. team. So uh, like you said, this is a this this was the most difficult series for you. I think it is for me as well. The other one that I would put maybe just beneath that is the Calgary Winnipeg Winnipeg series. All right. That one's totally up in the air for me. I have no idea. But this one, this one's tough because are we going to get the Rangers team from this year specifically, or are we going to get uh, the Rangers team when the year first started and maybe chemistry wasn't right there because the players yeah. weren't used to playing uh, with each other. Cause it's been four and a half months since they played together. So yeah, it's been a while. I don't know. It's going to be tough, but uh, it's, it's a series I'm going to be watching every single game of I'm obviously going to try to watch every game I can, but that yeah. series in, in particular, uh, I'm definitely going to watch. So uh, any final thoughts on this series before we wrap it up? I'm just so excited that hockey's back. Like, um, it's going to be the most interesting playoffs we've had in a long time. Uh, it's so different. Like, there's been more time that has like gone by from the last game in March. What was it, 16th or something like that? Mm. To now, from most regular off season. So, like, it's it's a whole new season. So everything that we just talked about could literally be mean nothing, and yeah. it's it's a whole new season. That's Literally. the thing. Like, like I tried to make the formula or the the thing to try and quantify my opinion or come up, come up with an opinion based on stats or whatever. And yeah. really, at the end of the day, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing because this year is totally different. Uh, it's it's so hard to predict any series, let alone this one. So yeah. uh, I'm not going to be too emotionally upset if all of my predictions are wrong because I almost honestly I just expect them to be at this point. So yeah, pretty just, much. Just well, one, one of us years. will be right here. So that's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that wraps it up. Kale, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. You guys Thanks should go check out uh, Kale's channel at uh, Vesper Hockey. He's also on Twitter and at Vesper Hockey as well. And if yep. you guys are not subscribed, I would love it if you could go down and hit the subscribe button and join me. I'm going to be trying to live stream this Saturday. I think uh, the entire day. So Ooh, I might watch. Is... I got the day off. Do you really? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. All right. Well, 
I need to talk to you after this then. So right. <laughs> thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one. Adios. Yeah.